Hello physics students, Mr. Stainerson here and I'm going to walk you through a short video on how to perform the closed tube calculations that you'll need in the unit with sound. So in the next slides, I will run through what this means in terms of resonance and also show you how to do a example calculation. Thanks. When we're examining the calculations for closed tubes, we have to remember what resonance means. Resonance is the loud part of the sound that you're going to listen for and hear, both in our speed of sound lab and also when we're doing these closed tube calculations. It's going to be the loudest part of the sound wave that we hear. So if we model a sound wave as a standing wave, and you can see that I have drew this here, this is one complete wavelength that when we, found, when we find the resonance, what we're looking for are the antinodes. So this part of the wave will be a loud sound and this part of the wave will be a loud sound. However, the nodes here, here, and in the beginning will actually deaden the sound and you would hear a lower, um, a, a lower volume of sound at that spot on the wave. So how do we change these spots? If we know that the antinodes are what we're going to be looking for. If those produce the resonance, how do we adjust for that? Well, imagine that we have that same wave inside a tube. And if the wave node is at one end of the tube and the other tube end is open, allowing the sound to leave, if we drew the full wave from start to finish, that finishes at another node. So this would actually be a quiet wave. It would not be a loud sound. But if we were to trim or shave off the end of the tube until we get to a anti-node, which is right here, we would hear resonance at this spot. And if we continue that idea and go all the way to the first anti-node, which is right here, if I go back and count how much of a wave is still in the tube, it looks like I start here at the node and go to the first anti-node, which happens to be one fourth of the full wavelength. Now, if that doesn't make sense, please review this video and back this up just a little bit, but look at the full wavelength and how much of that wave is present when we get to the first anti-node is at the open part of the tube, you would hopefully see that that's one fourth. If I change the tube again, and now I have a half of a wave, notice that would produce a soft sound because we're at a node. The next anti-node is now at three quarters of a wavelength. This is the second harmonic that we, we call. In other words, it's the second loud sound that we're gonna hear, the second resonance in our wave. This is the first harmonic or the first loud sound that we're going to hear when it's at a quarter of a wave. Please keep this in mind, it's really important when we're discussing our math in the next section. I now want to explain how to understand this mathematically. If we know that resonance occurs in a closed tube at a one quarter wavelength, then we can translate this to equations that we're familiar with. Another way of saying this is that one wavelength is equal to four times the length of the tube. And then if I translate this back to wave speed, I know that to calculate wave speed, I take the frequency times the wavelength. I can substitute and solve now for frequency. So the frequency in Hertz is equal to the wave speed in meters per second divided by the wavelength in meters. Another way of writing that is to take frequency is equal to the wave speed divided by 4L. I substituted 4L for wavelength, knowing that that's the relationship when the first resonance happens. Now I can just continue this idea and talk about um, what we see 
if we see a harmonic. Remember the harmonics are the different um, anti-nodes that we get to. So the first harmonic is one, so one times this for, uh, the um, speed divided by 4L. If it was the second harmonic, I would put two, two times the wave speed um, divided by 4L and so on and so forth. So this is, is one way to calculate um, any of the things that you're going to need for the quest or for the speed of sound lab. Just keep in mind that frequency is equal to velocity divided by 4L when we have a resonating tube. This is for a closed tube calculation. I'm going to walk you through an example of a closed tube calculation. So the problem might state it this way. Find the closed tube length that would produce a frequency of 256 hertz. We can use our frequency is equal to the velocity divided by 4L, knowing that this is the first harmonic, so our N becomes 1. We want to solve for length, and then remember that the unit will be in meters. So in doing so, I'm going to substitute in what I know. 256 hertz is the frequency. 343 meters per second is a good speed of sound to use, divided by 4L. Now I can run the math and solve for length, and I get about 0.335 meters. If you're doing this calculation for the speed of sound lab, they might ask you to um, find this for centimeters, or if you're doing this for the musical instrument, you might need to change into centimeters to make this a little bit more manageable for measurements. But this is the basic idea in both of those activities. Thanks.